What's up, everybody? This is Chris, and I'm one of the hosts of Crucial Tunes. It's a podcast where me and my buddy Larry, we sit around and talk about music. We talk about Can't wait for crucial music tunes we like, it's gonna be music great. we don't like. Crucial list of tunes. Ooh, I like music, that. old music, yes, mainstream, water. underground. So, uh, talk to some local nine? bands. Do it all. What? So if you like music, why don't you tune on in? No, Crucial six. Tunes. six. Every other down. Friday on the journey. Sad, dude. Sad, dude. Sad, dude. The following, the following is a journey into comics. 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 Network. 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 Production. Production. That's me. We're gonna fuck the sodomites in the... OG intro. This is old school, I think. We'll see. For sure. It's the OG intro. Wow, I can't believe I have this. Yeah, that's a lot more intense before that. Yeah, it does. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode 83 of Podcastrophe. I am your host, Dick. Or... Wait, am I am I dick today? You are my host, Tyler. That's kind of right. If, what something's something's weird. Uh, I don't know what happened here. You know what? We're just gonna roll with it. Just do what we do. Anyways, to to let 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 the listener in on the truth, we are now celebrating Fool's Week here at the Journey into Comics Network. I am your host, Nate, and today we will be doing podcast for me and my co-host for the day. Once again, joining me during Fool's Week. Hey, ya, uh, not hey, uh, planned. Not planned. Uh, Welcome, AP. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Dude, it's good to have you here. Gotta trust the cup. Trust the cup. It puts us together. Oh, yeah. The cup <laughs> always puts us together. The cup, <laughs> the cup provides, man. The cup provides. The, that might be the episode title. The cup provides. The penitent man kneels before God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> or, or Jesus, I guess. I didn't mean to say that either. But, uh, <laughs> so, dude. <laughs> this, is, this is already going so well. Uh, oh, man. I'm excited to be doing this episode mm. with you. I don't even know where to start, man. What has been good in your world? Uh, just uh, enjoying. I had some time off. Uh, Liz has been on spring break, so we got to took a about a day and a half off uh, last week. Just to that we went did uh, Dave and Buster's had some fun there. Just got just had a good time. What did you do at Dave and Buster's? Played a lot of arcade games. What kind of arcade games did you play? Uh, let's see. We did like what were your top three favorite arcade games? I like the classic ones. Ski ball. Okay, ski ball is uh, favorite. There's also one that's uh, you ever played beer pong, like actually beer pong. Well, what, yeah, am but... I fucking ten? Yes, I played beer pong. <laughs> but it's like it was. There's a game that's essentially beer pong. It's just like solo cups lined up on a machine, and you throw the ball like a ping pong ball into the cup. Do you drink from the cup? No, it's just it's just a game that's just throwing a ping pong ball into a red solo cup. The cup provides, man. Cup I'm telling provides. you, I'm telling you. So what else have you guys been doing on this vacation, spring break time? You uh, went to Dave and Buster's. Do, Dave any, and Buster's do any movies? We've not. The last movie we saw was Us, and I think we're going to talk about that later. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to talk about that later on two weeks from now's episode. La- of later foodie. in the way. In the future, way future foodies. Future foodies. It's weird to do. Uh, but anyways, man, it's uh, it's been crazy in my world, too. Yeah, what have you been up to? Uh, no shows. We did Fun for Funs. That was cool. Yeah, it, lo- it looked looked fun. It was fun. For funds. funds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, we uh, we put that event together. It went really smoothly. I was really happy with the turnout and everything. And I can't wait for more events with the Journey into Comics Network. What's up, Brandon Stone? Joining the fold, OG founder of the Journey into Comics Network, joining us here today on Podcastrophy. Hello. He's probably at first he was a little confused. He's like, "Wait, who am I saying?" And then he's like, "Oh, I bet I know what the fuck's going on." Or, what, what day is today? What day is? Today? Or Dick was a bad dick and told Brando the story of who got what in Fool's Week. That doesn't surprise me either. Doesn't surprise that's me. The, either. That's the thirty percent. But that's like going a hundred percent to spoil it. But th- I guess is that thirty percent of giving a fuck? <laughs> it's it's wibbly wobbly type. So, anyways, to get on the other side of on the other other side of. Uh, Doing the fun for funds, which was a fun event. 
Uh, Successful event. This week has been like focusing and getting ourselves together. We've got this WrestleMania show coming up where we've got a lay at the SmackDown on a bunch of jabroni bands. Which Did you say WrestleMania? Yeah, WrestleMania 5. It's Punk Rock Night's annual event. The okay. winner of the event gets to take home the PRN title. Okay. You have that title and you have to defend it the following year. This year's champion, or the champion that should have been defending this year, couldn't. Or they heard we were coming to town and didn't want to show up or something. I don't know what it is. But whatever it is, we've been doing a lot of shit talking on the event page. You can go to the uh, PRN WrestleMania 5 page and see all the different things we've been saying and all the different. I've just been any ultra good, any, heel. Any good burns? Uh, from me, yeah. Uh, so we're playing with the band called Ninth Circle Symphony and a band called uh, Filth and Majesty and a band called uh, Brando Says I Know a Few. Uh, <clears throat> we're also playing with a band called Three Cities. So I've renamed those bands because I don't like their names. So we've got the Steampunk Toilet Twins, <laughs> Fat Elton John and the Sing Along Boys. <laughs> Fat Elton John. That's my favorite because this guy, he just he wore this like really fanciful getup and he was wearing shades trying to be all ritzy and it just didn't work for me, so I called it out. <laughs> uh, and then Three Titties because this band Three Cities cut a promo and their lead singer was in a bathrobe that I think was his mom's maybe and like he didn't have a shirt on and it was just maybe a little bit too much skin showing and anyway so so we've just been like slaying these clowns with our promos it's been a lot of fun we've also been prepping some new music I'm not going to go into that here spoilers you know that's coming this week you guys can check that out if you go to the uh, event but let me tell you I had a really crazy thing happen okay and this is something I'm excited to tell you because this is we haven't been able to talk about it yet, but uh, Veronica's mom knows this guy, good friends. I think they might have dated or whatever, and, and he's uh, he's a multimillionaire and decided he's going to sell his house and all his possessions because he's going to take care of his mom. Okay. <clears throat> so he contacted us and was like, hey, I've got some stuff for you guys, and it's stuff I'm giving away. It's also if you come in here and you see anything you might want that I might be selling, just ask me. You can probably have it. Like I, I really don't care that much. I don't need you know whatever. So we were like, okay, cool. So we went over a few days ago, and uh, it was like a treasure trove, man. Like I'd been to his house several times before. This is the place where I had played VR before. Is that where you the basement VR setup? Yeah, the intense VR setup. Oh yeah, it was wicked. Right, same place. So we go down there, and he's like, man, I got like a bunch of gaming things for you. He's like, I got a an a Xbox 360 that I don't want. I was like, okay, I have an Xbox 360, but I'll take it, sure. He's like, I got a bunch of Xbox 360 and PS3 games. Okay, cool. I've got a PS3. I was like, holy fuck, my PS3 died a year ago, and I haven't had one for an entire year. You're replacing my PS3. Thank you. This is crazy. Then he's like, I also have a brand new, only played twice, Xbox One. <laughs> like, uh, okay. Is that, is that where the controller came from? Yeah, and then he's like, hey, I've also got this NVIDIA thing I bought. I don't know what that's about. You can have that. And then there's all this <laughs> other shit that... LED work light over there and like he donated a ton of games to Dungeons with Dudes so they're gonna have like a whole treasure trove oh, of market. new oh yeah like <clears throat> it was crazy man it was a really so he's really like just getting rid of he was cleaning house he even gave us a fucking Victrola from like 1919 or some shit seriously yeah it's in the back it's wicked I, I mean it was it was one of those moments where how like how big is that eh, it, it was small enough to fit in my truck but still pretty big okay uh <clears throat> It was one of those moments where I was like overwhelmed as a person because uh, I was just going there to kind of help this guy maybe clean up and get prepped for selling stuff, you know. Right. And then he was just like unloading, like here just, you can, can have you this, just, have this, take, take this, it. keep this. You want this? You want my freezer? You can have it. And I was like, oh. the deep freeze? Uh, no, it's a tall freezer. Like we haven't picked it up yet, but he said we could have it. I was like, oh Put shit, that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so that was like a really cool experience. And then just like I got the Xbox here. I turn it on. Doesn't work. It's a hundred percent full. He like downloaded every game he ever wanted to play <laughs> and never touched it. And I was like, well, you know what? Most people would probably just keep on his account, play on all his games he's bought. I don't want to do that. I want my own system. So I want to have my you wiped it. Hard wipe. Hard wiped took everything. It back to off day it. one. Day one. Start fresh. Did that with that one, and that only took about an hour. Okay, to to refresh and uh, okay. Nice. Check out Xbox Game Pass when you get a chance. For a dollar, you get Xbox Game Pass. Yes. Really? I, yeah, yeah. First 30 days or something are free, and then it's like a dollar. Uh, I looked into it, actually, Brando. The nice thing about it is you actually get uh, free games constantly. Like, every month, there are new games that come out that you have. And I believe... Are there, are there like, just a couple-year-old games? 
some are fairly new titles. Some are a couple years old. Some are Xbox 360 games remastered and whatever. Nice. Uh, but it's nice because you, once you download the game, it's yours. So if you stop having Game Pass, you still have the game. When I had PSN and I would download games for PS3, they would, if you didn't keep having your gold subscription or whatever, They're PS wet. Plus, you away. couldn't play it. If you, if you bought a game on PS Plus and didn't have PS Plus, you couldn't access it. Hmm. And I was like, that's kind of bullshit. So it's like, kind of like Audible. Yeah. Totally like Audible. So Once you, you have the book, you keep it. Right. So it, very well said. Nice. Um, but then he gave me this NVIDIA thing. It's called the NVIDIA um, Shield. Okay. And it's like a Roku okay. for gaming. All right. It, it comes 10 bucks a month. Oh, Brandon corrects me. 10 bucks, not $1. It, maybe it's $1 for brand new first monthers. I don't know. But and I then did $10 see a month continuing after that. Yeah, that's not bad, though. That's actually a for really good deal. Games you can keep, yeah. And, and I mean, an unlimited library. It's very vast. Nice. Uh, another thing that was cool is when I signed into my Draxus Rocker Xbox account, it immediately pulled up all my previous game downloads and were like, do you want to download these onto this system now? And I was like, Yes, so I've got like Super Meat Boy and my fucking. Oh, I remember like, Super Meat Boy. All playing at your yeah. house. Yeah, and I've or got like your old old house. Yeah, your yeah. dad's place. Hell yeah, man! Old school times. Yeah, it's been a minute. I don't think Sarah was playing it, but still, good stuff. Yeah, yeah, and you hoss beat that game for me because <laughs> I couldn't get past that one. Game Pass <laughs> games need a subscription. Okay, so they have changed it. Xbox exclusive new releases day one. Oh, so you get them. Playable day one. That's bitching. Nice. Brandon is teaching us the ways of Game Pass. I did not do my. I totally dicked this down. Brandon's just the third host. And today. did he <laughs> is the third host today? Welcome back to Podcast Free Brando. He's a frequent host on this show. So uh, the Nvidia Game Shield, though, I want to mention. I, I had no idea what this thing was. Yeah, I was like, what the fuck? Well, I really know what Nvidia is like the graphics, right? Yeah. That's what I thought too. So apparently this is like a Steam machine because you can use it with your Steam games. Okay. You can use it for like Hulu, Netflix, all the shit, your streaming stuff. But it also comes preloaded with tons of library. And one of the big games on that library that shocked me, I immediately was like, holy hell, I'm going to have to play this on this NVIDIA immediately, was the new Tomb Raider, the OG reboot Tomb Raider. Okay. The one that came out like, like four or five years ago. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. But still, it was like, wow, you actually have that on your system built in. Like, I'm going to check it out for sure. And they had a ton of other games that were free to play. Like, and you can right. obviously play your Fortnites and any of your Battle Royale type games. Is it PC type gaming? Like, yeah, also. Keyboard. Yeah, and the nice thing, too, about the NVIDIA Shield game troller is you can actually custom design what each button does how you want it. Oh, to nice. Be. So, gaming how you want it. Are there more? Game Pass is fucking amazing. Xbox Live. 360 Xbox Live free games you keep. Oh, so oh. that's the ones you keep. So the Xbox Ones you don't get to keep. The 360 Ones you do, it sounds like. That makes that makes even more sense. Yeah, I haven't played a video game in months. I played a lot of Red Dead. I was pretty deep into that. I got, I don't know, I was like... Probably like 40% through, and then Ollie wanted to play it. And I was like, okay, so we... Just, oh, I remember you told, me, you told the story on... He wrecked a horse, and that was fucking hysterical. But then he went on the murder spree. Did yeah. I tell that story? You told us on JIC. He literally shot a dude under the fucking chin, like, execution style, and I was like, we are done here. Like, it's it, we're taking the controller right now. Immediately put on the Lego game for him, the Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2. Did the same thing, right? No, no, he didn't, he didn't do the same thing. That's great, though. Uh, yeah, he, he totally was Iron Man and blew this fucking Jatari's head clean off. It was crazy. Uh but uh no he uh he he fell in love with that game too and but then I started falling back in love with the Lego Marvel superheroes game oh. so I started playing that and then now with this recent um you know turn of events with the with the Xbox one the only sad thing is the Xbox one didn't come with any games he didn't have any actual disc games because he was downloading everything oh, she just bought the uh, digital so I am gonna have to kind of so when like, you wiped it you lost all of the but it was linked fine. to his account you couldn't transfer it yeah it does it does it didn't really bother me that much like there, there was nothing like oh I really wanted to play that game I should keep it just this one the only one there was actually one what was it it was the new hit man he had the entire all the, fucking the, seven wasn't it like the it was like a the kind of like what they did for the master chief collection it was just one of those but for hitman no the 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 new hitman came out in like episodes episodics oh. and they were big chunk 
things. I mean, each episode was like 11 to 15 gigs. Oh, wow. So it was, they so were really, massive. You must have the terabyte one, right? Yeah. Uh, so he had that shit full, though. It's 99% full. It only had 500 megs. I was like, I need to clear this, or I'm not going to have anything on it, you know? Right. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was a whole crazy... Didn't you have an Xbox One already? No. Oh, so I you... never had an Xbox One. Um, yeah, it, it, this is... Uh, it was really cool and humbling to have something like that happen. You just don't expect that. Right. He just knew you would like this stuff. And was just like, hey. He's just like, man, I don't need it. It's not doing me any good. It's more work to sell it. I did ask him about I did ask him about the Oculus. He's like, don't touch it. <laughs> that's, that's probably going for a... No, it's his. He's like, I'm, this, is his, this is one of the few things that's going to mom's. Like, I'm going to go veg out and play there. There you go. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Fuck it. Hey. Love it. You'd never see you again if you had that here. Uh, I would never see me again because I would just like no. Nah. You know what? Just... Honestly, though, I don't like VR as much as maybe some people, mainly because it does hurt my head. Right. It definitely gives me that. Well, it, depending on the game, too. Well, doesn't like if you in excited amount of time you'll get like not vertigo, but you'll get like like motion sickness almost. Oh, de- well, definitely because you know you're tricking your fucking brains. Hitman is on Game Pass, I think. It was when I played it. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, see, and, and uh, I think I feel like Square Enix has the Hitman series now, so it's like a much more vast and deep game. Yeah. And last, I'm pretty sure the last game I played was the, not the new Assassin's Creed, like the one that came out, but the one before that one. Um, not Odyssey, but the other one, the one that, Origins. Yes, the, with the pyramids. Uh huh. Yeah, I haven't played that yet. I have. I barely started. I like I played a little bit of it, but it, that game's like four years old. Now. You know what's weird? I always like playing Assassin's Creed games after they're out of style. Like, I think I had it. I didn't start Assassin's Creed 1 and beat it until like a year after it came out. I think it came out in 07. I didn't play it and beat it until 08. I like that game. And that was like right before Brotherhood came out. No, no, 2. Because 2 came out, then Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Then 3, then Revelations, then Black Flag. No, I think it was Revelations, then 3. It was Revelations, then 3. That's Because it was right. Ezio's story. That's I think. right. Yeah. I liked Ezio's story. See, man. I'm so far back on gaming shit anymore. I don't like the jankiness of the VR camera. Uh, de- depending on which uh, VR you're playing, I think, can definitely, yeah. Uh, I know that when I tried the Google headset thing, mm-hmm. I don't know what the fuck was that called. Uh, was it Oculus? But no, but it had, it was just like you just took your fucking phone. Yeah, Samsung had that. Yeah, I had, yes. I, had it, I had it for my Samsung phone. It doesn't work on this phone, but I haven't. I did it. It was fun for a little bit, and it's just not. Yeah, I don't think it's. It's just, more just gimmicky. IO Interactive left Square and took Hitman with him. Oh wow! So IO Interactive has Hitman back oh, okay. again. Damn, it's a crazy turn of events. I saw the weirdest thing that with the that was I. You can watch Netflix through the VR, but it's like you're sitting on a couch watching the. <laughs> It's really like you can just clearly you pretend to sit on a couch in the VR world like your <laughs> feet are kicked up in a VR form. <laughs> Basically, you're like what? you're sitting there, just like you're watching. It's like you're like watching a movie, but it's just the Netflix screen. You know, I wish. As I, I guess, sh- if you didn't have a TV, you could just sit there with your VR yeah, headset definitely. on and just watch it. I uh, I wish greatly that when do you remember PlayStation had that like oh God, it was like a life or whatever. It was PlayStation 3's thing where you could you like became a interactive uh, avatar and you walked around in your own oh. world. You could like have your own apartment or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I kind of remember that. Uh, and it was like a beta thing they were trying. And I know that initially VR cameras feel wobbly to me. Okay, I get that. Uh, uh, oh, the thing on PS Life though that I wanted always wish they they said that you could do was like hey if you're in PS life and you're going to watch a movie you can invite your friends over and they'll see your the movie you want to watch on their screen that never happened that was just like some fanciful thing they wanted to have happen but I thought that would be so cool to like be in a video game world and sit down in your video game world invite your virtual friends who are all online right. and then just stream the same movie at the same time and know you're all in the same point in the movie and be able to like headset talk to each other. I think that's yeah. a fun concept. It, I think, um, I think that, doesn't that a thing that exists now with like certain live streams you can like live stream like a private one with friends to watch the same. Isn't that a thing that exists? Yeah, no, I think now they do have that. Right? Something like that. Like you can time it all so they're all so like no one's like two seconds ahead of everyone else or, or lagging. Yeah, one guy's like, <laughs> and then everybody's like. What was? <laughs> yeah, you know, everyone's insane. Be fuck. It'd be like very strange. Everyone's laughing manically in their own timing. Yeah. Uh, so what else is good, AP? 
Um, I feel like we're really giving the thirty percent for this show. So, oh, we can talk about the sh- struggles we had trying to get this set up. Oh man, yeah. So we were gonna have all the fancy shit, and like Streamlabs OS has this thing where like uh, over here by AP would have been the Journey into Comics Network logo, and over here by me would have said download the podcast. And up here, I'm doing my great. <laughs> I love weather, your, your gesture. <laughs> up here would be where it would say podcast your feet. I mean, everyone would be like, there are two O's. That's yeah. what we have up here. We have the the live stream viewers just got a cool show of me like doing the weatherman thing where I've got to be like, AP is here, but I'm pointing there on the screen. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? It's very uh, confusing. Yeah. But then our audio listeners are like, what is he doing? Who is this guy? Why is he on our feed? What's happened? Again, Fool's Week, it's... it's should we explain that? We can. So Fool's Week is basically, it's a... Where we kind of jumble up the host and the shows for one week, giving people a chance to kind of play in each other's world. Yeah, it's, and uh, create your own visions of these shows. Right. I think. Like, if you had full control over a different show on the network, what would you do differently, or what would you do the same? If you just liked what they did and it's like, I would like to be on it. Let me do my own thing. You know, and I think I think another thing too is it allows people to breathe when you do a certain style of show so long. If you're mm-hmm. topical. Like, I know for a fact that the first time we did this, it must have been a big relief for you to not have to do poor rapport because you were doing news-based, essentially Trump-based articles week in and week out on the grind because there was so much to cover. That's why why my show evolved so much and changed a lot. Because you wanted to find where it was truly yourself, and I think you found an awesome mix of things here. Right, because this one is just – it's now a topic as opposed to news, so it's a lot – which the news can be involved in that. Like, yes. your topic could be voted on that it is kind of like you did indictments right. for episode 10. I think it was very topical. Yeah. Even more so now. But yeah. That's yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Uh, 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 it says we had another person join, but it didn't say who that joiner was. So, hi, joiner, whoever you were. I'm not I'm uncertain. Did we, a, did we get a notification about it? Maybe. I don't know. I'm uncertain. It's, uh, Dick Blantyner posted. Oh, Dick shared it? Oh, no, maybe not. No, I he don't didn't. Know. Dick doesn't love us like that. <laughs> what a dick. He, he's asleep. He is, he is he feels asleep. Uh, so back to the Streamlabs thing because we were only kind of slightly on that. We started putting that together, right? And in doing so, the thing wouldn't work. It just like kept not letting us go live with it for right. some reason. It kept just like loading. I hit the spinny wheel. Yeah, who likes the spinny wheel? Peter Griffin. <laughs> Remember that episode when the spinny wheels just like shows up in the middle of Family Guy and they're all like, "What's that? Just wait, it's a spinning wheel." <laughs> Everybody's like looking at it, like, "What the fuck is going on?" Oh, uh, man. It, you know, it wouldn't be podcastrophy without mentioning how much I loathe the new Butterfinger. Are you just staring at the old I'm, Butterfinger? I'm looking at the old Butterfingers, and I'm like, "Shit, it's glorious." They're good. Oh, <sighs> liquid gold, liquid gold. It is, man. I tell you what, a smart man would be stocking up on those motherfuckers put them on eBay. and put them on motherfucking. It's like eBay. how everyone was selling the Szechuan sauce. At, for McDonald's for like five bucks or fifty bucks. Or... Can I actually see that real quick? Yeah. The Szechuan sauce thing that was amazing. The original Szechuan sauce sold for like what, like a couple thousand when they people were. And selling then they released it again, and then it just and dropped it, the whole. It system. didn't mean. Read that line in the white right there for me. No artificial flavors or colors. So what the fuck did Ferrero Rocher take out of that shit? If they did, if if they if they claim they took out all the bad stuff, and it mm. says there's no bad stuff in that bad stuff. Just make sure it wasn't a rebrand. No, this is still Nestle Ferrero. Rocher. Yeah, I. Uh... Crispity, crunchy, peanut buttery are registered trademarks. That makes sense too, actually. No, Nestle's from Switzerland. How about that? Like I'm just looking at the wrap right now. No, that's good. We cocoa plan supporting farmers for better chocolate. Yeah. See, you best look at- by March 2019. End of March 2019. So that's that's why this today. is the, this is the last of the. That's why it's that's why they're getting cheap and that's why they're bringing the new ones on because this is the last batch probably i would still hoard them i don't give a fuck if they say they're on a date it's like a twinkie it's not gonna go bad yeah a giant giant twinkie i still have yet to try the i don't think everyone on the network has tried the new ones but we'll find we'll find out later we'll please, find out in a few weeks please read that comment from mr stone <laughs> avenge the fall <laughs> i just want to see that i love that, 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 that is, dude. That's, that's been so many memes it's hilarious oh man the there 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 have been let's saw, see uh someone did um, for the March Madness, won't, someone did a uh, Avengers of Fallen, but they made the F a four because it's like the final four is coming. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, March Madness. I forgot about basketball. That's weird. That's a weird topic to talk about today. Sports. Sports. 
I don't, think, I, don't think, I don't think sports comes with my podcast for that often. No, it doesn't. I don't, I don't think they're really sports people. They're more butt stuff people. <laughs> more butt I mean, stuff if, people. if we're beside, yeah. Oh, like if we're being honest. Oh my gosh. But so yeah, I think they're halfway through the final four. Really? We have games. Do they have games today? I don't. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't follow either. basketball closely enough. I just watched games last night. So hmm. interesting. Purdue so, lost. That's all. That okay. Matters. <laughs> okay. So what do you want to talk about today, man? We've kind of like bullshitted for about a good 20-some-odd minutes here, and I feel like we could probably get into some topics and dive into some things. Uh, is there anything that tickles your fancy off the top of your head? Hmm. He hmm. I'm trying to think. Uh, don't strike I don't know. Brains. I'm not sure. Oh, I actually, I got you something. Hold on. Okay. He has totally just left the podcast during the show. This is amazing. This is historic. We have another a joiner who's joined us. I made the Butterfinger and Owen Hart ones. I got you this. What? <laughs> what if Marvel Comics went metal with Ghost Rider? Oh, my God. Look at this cover. Oh, my Lord. And I'm not going to lie. The back cover is kind of dope, too. I like the Spideys on the back. Okay, I got I to gotta crack this open and see if there's some dope art looks. You're, you're seeing True Collector in me, how fragile I'm like. Yeah. Because there's, there's no... There's no board on it. This might literally be worth 12 cents, and I'm going to treat it like it's a $4 million comic. Because, <laughs> you know. Ah, ah, move that. Everything's happening at once. Oh I love the Owen Hart and Butterfinger ones. Um, okay. M- Marvel Comics presents. I can't read what that Madison? says. I don't know. This is very weird. It's different. I like it. I like the what ifs because they can literally change the format. And you know it's funny that you brought this what if to this episode because it's like Fool's Week and here's the oh you know what that is? That's a riff on the first appearance of Vision. Just to pull up there, this guy's holding a comic that's like the first appearance of Vision, although it is not actually the first appearance of Vision. Massenwald, Hasenwald. I think it said something on like the last page about what the Hasen we lost. Hastenwald. Hastenwald. Weird. Whoa. Okay, well, I'm going to have to read that off air. So just read it Because I like could it. totally get lost in that right now. Dude, thank you so much. Well, I saw it. I was like, oh, Nate would. That's wicked. It was wicked. like a dollar. I was like, I all lo- right, Nate would love I this. I love that <laughs> cover, too. Robbie Reyes. Play- Here, let me put that on there. I don't think. Did I put that on there? I did. You I did, did show it off. But it. just one more time. Robbie you- Reyes playing the guitar on the hood of the guitar. Because we were talking about. You were. On a JIC, you were talking about Robbie Reyes about yes. fun for funds because you're talking about how Ghost Rider could do could be the Deadpool of the MCU or something like that. Uh, I mean, I think AJ was bringing that, that AJ point was bringing up, it up for sure. But yeah, that's a that is a good theory uh, using um, Ghost Rider as kind of a Meta? be anywhere guy. You know, he doesn't have to be his own movie. He doesn't need to have the spotlight. He can jump around and be utilitarian, or you can go super comical and change the game. But I think right. now having Deadpool, they're going to stay focused on that. Yeah, I know this might be more of a Jay stuff, but have you talked about the the new? We talked about the Avengers: The Fallen, but have you talked about the new posters that they dropped this past week on JSC, or has it been talked about on JSC? The thirty-two posters, the face posters, yeah. or that... the Russia poster, just or all, the yeah, Chinese just... poster. All, there's lots of posters that have dropped for Avengers uh, and the merch. The lot. they yeah man the merch try to avoid the spoilers you know what I don't even think I'm not even worried about sure, it but they've said like there's gonna be a lot of bait and switch which is that how I would do it too much bait and switch you think I mean my thing is if you're go- if you want to surprise and shock people think about the moment you were in theaters for the first time seeing Infinity War mm-hmm. and Red Skull showed up yeah you weren't expecting it well because then they not released the uh the f- they showed the fungal for it but it was much after the fact right oh way after it was like but there's also but that's also like when they teased the uh the hulk jumping out of the hulk buster armor correct and then that never came to fruition because i think it's going to happen in end game well you do see hulk in a jumpsuit now so here's my theory on that we're going to talk about that real quick because th- i'm glad you brought that up so you had that fun co of Hulk busting out of Hulkbuster. When we see the end of Infinity War, uh-huh. Banner is still in the Hulkbuster, right? right? Everybody, the fallen, like, oh God, you know, Steve is freaked out because everything's happened. 
it wouldn't surprise me for Hulk to freak out in that moment and break, and out. break out and in take, anger. Like, take off running or something. Correct. And then Bruce has to like, hey, buddy, whoa, whoa. Well, like, then, he's the voice of reason well, now. Because they, they have to, because remember they said at one point during that, that they have to, we need to work some stuff out. So I think that's my when they'll come together and become more of a unified entity. Absolutely. I think uh, we're working towards a Professor Hulk, a Gray Hulk, if you will. A form of Hulk where it's actually the powers of Hulk but the mind of Banner. Mm -hmm. And then when you get that, you have a, a fine, well-oiled machine. You know, he's going to be unstoppable. I just think that they're going to do a lot of things in this movie that we aren't expecting. I think we might see Ultron back. Or a version of Ultron. A version of Ultron or well, teases. If they, if, well, if they play with time at all, there's no way that any of the past villains can come back. What what was that? If they play with time at all, there's no reason that not any of their past films. Can uh, yeah, come I got back. you. I, absolutely. So bring back Obadiah Stane. Ooh, that would be interesting to bring fuck with Tony. Monger. Bring back the monger. Oh, the, the, see, there are interesting things you could do with well, all of that. Because like, it's um, because yeah, we could really, or if it's just more mess with the reality stone. The reality stone is the interesting piece of the puzzle that I think, and you heard me say this on that the Fun for Fun's JIC. I think it is the key to unlocking the change across our MCU with these heroes that have right. just been MIA. Uh, but yeah, I still, I know I think I said it on on Poor Three Sixty last week that I don't think it's going to happen as fast as we hope it will. But I know it they it doesn't stop them from teasing it. Definitely, definitely. So I know, so I know they've, they they couldn't film anything in direct reference to it, but they could record a little something. Oh, okay, the, and okay. So you look at this merger and how everything's happening. Right. You look at the behind the scenes of stuff, mm -hmm. and I don't know about you, but if I'm a major conglomeration and I'm trying to get a, a deal going, right? How early do you think they knew that mid March was the deal close? They probably knew in December, I would guess. Right. Because, okay, we're working towards this date. If we can get it by March 21st, which I think was the right. actual date, maybe us secretly having these reshoots around right. the same. You know what I'm saying? I just don't like, think legally they could show anything like that. They could probably draft it, but I think rights-wise, because the deal for some reason fell through March, they are in violation of stuff if they record anything ahead of time. They could have recorded something now, and it would have been fine. Which I feel they like, still could. I mean, I think still... the way they have to work contracts for people to show up can't be if they don't have the rights at the time. Oh. Unless Fox filmed the reshoots Ooh. separately with the intention of using it. Like if it was like they brought whatever the Rooster Brothers on for like a two day contract as a separate hire to film reshoots on a thing that they had the rights to, but they knew Marvel needed the rights to. Yeah. That's a smart way around it. Because actually. then and then they don't do anything with it and then once the rights transfer that Footage. footage is just theirs. Yeah, exactly. So that's something they could do to work around it. That's actually a really smart way to work around that because then you can plan things out in great detail. Right. And they really could have Deadpool in this movie. They really do, could have any number of things. Do happen. you know if uh, if Stanley had a cameo in Dark Phoenix? You know, I don't know about Dark Phoenix because I don't know. When did they, he keep on with all the X Men? I believe so. Uh, cameos. So yeah, I would assume he probably had one. Uh, Depending on when they well they they, fi they filmed it a while ago. Oh so. yeah, I mean you got to think that movie was supposed to come out last year. Well, because I mean, uh, whatever uh, Sophie Turner's been filming Game of Thrones for the past year, so yeah, so this, she's been done with that a while ago. But we'll be we'll have to see how that shakes out. I think that Spidey, uh, Far From Home, is going to be Stan's last MCU appearance. Mm -hmm. Well, they said they're not gonna. He he will be featured in every subsequent film in some capacity. Oh yeah, they're not. Do they're that. not gonna digital. I think there might when, like if you like when you watch the Netflix shows, how he was always in the episodes, but he was just like a poster or something. They just they'll use footage. Just a way to nod at him mm -hmm. and say, "Hey, we love you, Stan." It'd be nice if you got him in a Jane Silent Bob reboot. Yeah, because he's been in the past couple Kevin Smith. Yeah, movies like the ones that. Didn't make sense. It was like yoga hosers just because he's friends with Kevin and was just yep. like, I'll do it. I'll do a cameo. Sure. Why not? Put me, in a, put me in a security guard outfit. I'll do it. I'm fine. I liked, I didn't mind yoga hosers. We did a foodies on that way back. You did. Was, I, you were, you did it too, fool. <laughs> it's been so You're long. like, you did. No. So we did, bro. We, did. we, we saw it, dude. Oh, like, God. saw it, dude. Old dad over here just not knowing what to do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're, you're doing bad, old dad. It's, oh, it happens. Man. Um, I was going to say something, and I cannot remember. 
I uh oh we did a I did a radio show recently. That was wild. We uh Walk Among Us got invited to do this radio show, the Doc Metal with the Real Months. And what is Dick saying? What I don't know, he said what the hell AP? What did I do? Who did I say? Oh, you just liked Podcastrophy and he busted <laughs> you out for it. <laughs> I really thought I did. Live on the podcast, <laughs> AP just got called out in our fucking Elite Four group. What the hell, <laughs> AP? I really thought I did. I have no. I need to go back now and see if I just did. I unlike it at some point on accident. You just... know, though, Facebook's weird like that. There have been people that I know for a fact, like like the Walk Among Us page. I know for a fact my dad likes that page. Recently, I invited him to like the page, and I was like. Facebook is kicking people off of liking certain things, I think. So it might have been possible that you actually did like it. And it got kicked. And it kicked you off anyway. I was looking at it to share it, and I was like, I am not on. <laughs> and Dick is like, you motherfucker. Tyler McLaughlin, love you guys. Oh, what's up, Tyler from Crucial Tunes? I can't wait to hear your guys' episode tomorrow. It's going to be radical. It's going to be crucialist? It's going to be the most crucialist of tunes. Crucialist of tunes. The crucialist of tuniists. Oh, God. Sounds bad, but... uh. AP. So have you seen anything in the in the realm to worth talking about? Have well, I seen anything worth talking about? You know what? Because it probably wouldn't fit on foodies, mainly because it isn't what we normally talk about in movie world. I'll talk about it here. So I watched a documentary. If you have the Amazon Prime video service, my dad does. He lets me use it. Uh, I like your docs too. I, oh, you, you know I love my documentaries. They're the best kind of storytelling. It's the real ones that you can't believe are true, right? So the Terry Kath experience is one of the most incredible stories I've ever heard. Uh, it's about this guitar player for this band called the Chicago Transit Authority, okay. CTA. Right, right. They later, later became a band known as Chicago. Nice. Okay. Terry Kath was their original guitar player. There is an original version of 25 or 6 to 4 that has a guitar solo that Terry Kath wrote that's insane. It's one of the best solos of all time, like hands did, down. Did not stay with Chicago after? Well, let's talk about what happened. The Chicago was doing their thing, and they are getting ready to go to another album, and he was like, I'm going to also work on and write a solo album. I have a two-year-old daughter. I have a different experience I want to share, so I'm going to do two projects. They were all very musical. They all worked together. And they probably were very cool with that. He, correct. So the thing with these guys were to create their music, they would go on two- or three-day benders where they would just stay awake and create and create and create and go and almost kind of go a little bit mad and loopy in, in doing so. They would also sometimes take LSD or acid or mushrooms vibing. or whatever. So sometimes, sometimes, but they weren't like doing like, the, 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 these guys weren't heroin addicts or, or coke right. addicts or anything like that, like meth addicts. They were doing the party drugs. Correct, right? And just to kind of unlock their brains and open up their minds. So he had been on a two or three day bender with no sleep and had done some of these drugs. And he was with one of his buddies and one of the guys in Chicago called him. And they were talking and he picked, he always carried his gun with him. No big deal. And he was talking, and he had his gun out, and he was talking to his friend, and he emptied the chamber, emptied the clip, did everything, and was joking, and went like this, and didn't check, and blew his fucking head off. He was His, his he was, friend? No, Terry? He blew, Terry Kath blew his own head off. He didn't mean to. He thought that it, the gun was empty. But he, he had one in the chamber. Because he didn't double check, and he was all fucked up, and you know... That's why he shouldn't have the gun off. But that's a whole other... A whole other thing. So the documentary is actually his daughter... Going and finding all the people that in, uh, were affected by this guy's life and telling that story. And it's so fucking incredible. Just like Jimi Hendrix to Terry Kath said, you're a better guitar player than me. I don't know why you're not more famous. Wow. That's fucking praise, man. Right. Like, it, it is honestly, like, it, it's, it is a little bit hard to watch because it's really, there are some sad moments you're just when, like, when did he When did he die? Uh, Where was this? I mean, it, they were, she was. They were, they were still CTA at the time. Yeah. No, they were just Chicago. I mean, uh, 25 or 6 to 4 had come out. I mean, they were on the up and up. They were right. just in the early episode. I think it was like 78 or 79 is when this so happened. So if this would have been in that age of social media, this thing would have, when this happened, it would have been massive news. Oh, totally. I mean, it still was massive news, I'm sure. But it was a little bit different because Chicago was up and comer. So it was just an up and coming musician that died. You know, they, it was yeah. tragic. You know, it was not um, a legend. And now you look back at the career of Chicago and you're right. like, and whoever the the new guitarist they got to, they brought on, but the, has... the crazy thing is, Terry Kath's death saved Chicago because all those guys were in the party drugs and they all immediately quit because they were terrified they would be next. Right. Well, if you see that, that would 
probably even if you're on something you're not going to unsee that for a very long correct, time correct you're permanently ptsd scarred and stuff what up miranda tyner joining the fold she's not my wife no, uh, that, right. let's be correct on that she's still dick's wife i might be playing dick today but that's all i'm doing <laughs> she's uh, like and Miranda just left and she just <laughs> left she's like, gone no, she's like no, this is be. not dick where's my dick that sounds wrong. He's probably he's probably <laughs> in this. In, he's probably in the house with her. Uh, right saw, dude. Uh, saw, dude. Like, oh, oh man. Uh, so uh, back to it. No, the Terry Kath story is really good. If you have an opportunity, seriously, yeah, I have to check that out. Uh, in the last doc I watched, um, you know, CNN does these series like the decades. Yeah, I just start, I just started watching like last week or so the two thousands because that's a very interesting time. Ooh. The two thousands, like. In terms of TV and what was going on in the world, yeah, uh, a lot of good TV started in the early two thousands. I think Veronica and I finished almost all of the eighties ones and like seventy five percent of the nineties, but we haven't started the two thousands yet because I didn't even know that was a thing. I love the CNN documentaries though. They did that three uh, identical strangers right. that I was talking about on Foodies, and uh, they also did the Love Gilda documentary, which I don't know if you saw Gilda that. Radner? Yeah, it's amazing. Did I they do. Did they do RBG or was that someone else? Yes, they also did the RBG. I haven't watched the RBGs yet. Um, that's on my list for sure. It's on Amazon. I'm no, Hulu. Hulu? Hulu. Hulu's got it all? Hulu. Hulu. CNN and Hulu got that tight bond. Very good. Uh, so, yeah, man, that's all I've got for, for movie stuff. What about you? Have you seen anything really interesting to note uh, uh, recently? Well, we'll talk about it later. Uh, I saw us. Oh yeah, you had said that. Yeah. We'll oh, uh, Andy has been in here. How did we miss it? Andy Ace, Andy Imhoff has been in here. He's probably like, "What the fuck is going on?" Is last name Imhoff? Yeah, he changed it from Ace to Imhoff. I, I don't know what's going on, unless it's foam backwards. Foam, or it actually be foamy. Andy, Andy foamy. Hey, Andy foamy. That's what I'm gonna call him from now on. What's oh. up, Andy foamy? Oh man, he's gonna hate me for. I'm trying to think what else I've. A lot of it's been catching up. I've been trying to work through getting caught up on the CW shows. Okay, I'm way the fuck behind on CW are shows you, uh, for sure. Are you caught up to the um, the crossover? Or did I you, just did you, watched you ju- the did crossover. You, did you just jump to the crossover. I totally did. I'm totally naive to everything. I've stayed away from spoilers. My goal yeah. is once this season of CW mm-hmm. is done, we're I'm gonna wrap back around and catch up fully. Well, you know, you know about Arrow, right? They're ending it. Ending it short ten episodes seasons. next year. Yep. You know that uh the Lady Player Felicity is not gonna be back next season. She really? Is, uh, she announced that the finale will be her last episode on Arrow. Well, she's dead. Uh I don't know about that. Felicity Smoke dead. We'll see. You're not you're not caught up, so I can't spoil anything, but okay. there's there's other things happening. I'm also not fully caught up on Arrow. I'm caught up on everything but Arrow now. I've been working I work in the order of the, the what I like, so I've I watched, got caught up on Flash, then Supergirl, now Arrow, and then Legends will be back this coming week, I think. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, no, I, we uh, we spent some time catching up on Gotham. Right. And that's been fun. Uh, most... they're, they're really just, since they're ending, they're, they're, they're not playing around. They can just do whatever. Nonstop fan service for five seasons. They have never let us down as fans of this show. I think once you jump on the Gotham train, it's really hard to jump off, and I actually think... It's the best superhero show on TV. It's better than The Flash. I think it's deeper than The Flash. I think its storytelling is a little bit less predictable because they don't draw it out for a long time what their game plan is. Yeah, I think it's evolved a lot. The first season, I think it was more police procedural. And it, they really, I think after season two, they were able to play more with the characters they had. Totally. They they just had to spend the first seasons to really build this world to make right. it make sense. Because, well, because like if you look at like Nygma now versus Nygma, oh. beginning of season one, he was just a... He was just a guy in a lab coat. Just he was smart and he was good at what he did. But he was he just... loved Kristen Kringle. Oh, Kristen Kringle. What was the What was the other the 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 duplicate? Oh, the duplicate of Kristen Kringle. What was her name? I cannot remember. Uh, but I, I really like a lot of them. Penguin's evolution, I think, has been my favorite character. Oh, to talk about favorite character evolution in Gotham is difficult because I think everybody's journey. The one is like pretty been pretty consistent is Zaz, but I still love Zaz. He he is amazing. He's his comedic level, especially you're not uh, <laughs> the trial of Jim Gordon come up coming up features Zaz pretty heavily, and it's some of his best work. He's fucking hysterical. Uh, but uh, so we're talking about character evolution in Gotham. I would also consider best character to evolve 
would pro- probably probably be Bruce actually because well, and I mean I think that's the obvious grow, answer because he's the if you look at him how much he's evolved as, like as a character and an actor I think but David I mean, like it's just his you don't get the arc you don't get you get in the context of what you see of like Bruce Wayne and Batman you see him at 10 years old and then at a 25 year old man yes you he, you don't get the in between this is what we've been getting like he you see how he dealt with the Jesus bull- years, if you as it were, yeah, the, you get the missing the, years. You how he dealt with bullies, how he dealt with being the heir, the heir to uh, Gotham, essentially the son of Gotham. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his his character arc, you know, you go back to that first episode, that pilot, and he is such a little tiny kid. But I mean, that's the, but it's also the same story you've seen. Yeah, the same age kid they've used in everything. But you've been able to actually witness him grow up legitimately and right. I, the one thing i think really drives it home is they put their chips in this kid to get tall and they got really fucking lucky that at 16 or whatever he's really fucking tall he's a is he still i think he's uh he's getting close to 18 now, he's right? almost 18 Cause i yeah. think cause i think selena the person who plays Selena Kyle is like is 18 now okay but i think he's like a year younger than her they're pretty they're right close. there yeah but i mean the, and you know and that's well, one and, thing and they yeah, they really hedged their bets with a lot of these younger actors, like uh, Cameron Monaghan as uh, Jerome. Yes, and, and uh, Carrie Michael Smith as Nigma has been amazing. I think he yeah, is maybe think, one of the best actors on that show. Right. And uh, even um, yeah, a lot of these like relatively unknown, like the guy who played Penguin. The last thing I saw before that he was in Accepted, Robin Lord Taylor. He was also uh, Griff or whatever in Men in Black Three, I think. Oh yeah, like but like he's just. They gave these people these platforms. And they've taken it like uh, Corey Michael Smith did uh, First Man. Ooh, how was that? I, I enjoyed it a lot. Okay, I, I meant to check that out. And it was it's, on uh, my list. If you if you have most signal cell, you might. It's very immer- like not immersive, but you will feel they do a lot of camera shots to make you really feel like you're in that space environment. The, like that, or like when they're doing like the the testing of the G's. So you'll kind of feel oh. like I would recommend not seeing that in IMAX. So you'll probably throw up. I, Shit. But seeing it at home, you'll probably be okay. But it's it's on I, Hulu. I, there's a couple of times I had to like like kind of take a step back, and I'm just like, okay, it's okay. This? Just close your eyes because they really like. But it's it's great. Ryan Gosling did a good job. It's but getting off. But yeah, he had a small part in that, but he did great playing a different person. Yeah, I I love Gotham. I um was we were talking about this earlier. I really think, and I think you agree with me that they need to. Maybe wait five years, keep this cast, mm-hmm. and then do a DCU streaming service right. movie. The fact that since, especially since the the DCU is not really, they're abandoning their conjoined construct they've come up with, being able to have like more elseworld st- not elseworld style, but if they kept this to DCU or maybe did um, do like what Netflix does and do like a small wide drop and then drop it on the streaming service like a month later. Yeah. Because I feel like, yeah, you wait a few years, keep the cast on, let everyone get a little bit older, let David Mazur train a bit. Oh, Since I know, because yeah. what I've read about, because at some point he's going to be in the cape and cowl, but I know it's not his body. They like digitally imposed him on a, because they want a taller person, I guess, is what I've read. It's still rumors. But or like they just had the stunt guys a bit bigger than him. He's pretty fucking tall, though. I mean, if you look at him, he's kind. Of, I mean, he's as tall as Alfred. That's true, but Alfred's not a tall guy. He's not taller than Nigma or anything. Uh, well, I guess that's true, but he's still growing up. Shit. Yeah, he's still. He might but, be like six eight by the time this is all done. Giant, you know. Put on fifty pounds of muscle, just ripped. What would you say about them maybe making him just like okay, Gotham is over. Now we're gonna take Gotham and turn it into. Arkham City and Batman's going to be on the CW verse, and he's going to have his own stories, and it's still David Mayzu. Well, it, if it, I don't think it would ever go on CW, especially if they're doing the Batwoman show, but on the DS, but on the streaming service, maybe. Well, you know what's put, interesting? Put him in the, put, you can put him in the Titans universe. You know who owns Gotham right now? Disney. Disney. Yeah, they technically own Disney owns part of Batman, which is probably why <laughs> Disney or why, why Gotham's, Gotham's over. Ending. They're like, well, let's just end it. That way, they can have rights to it. Right. Hmm. It, it is interesting because they technically, for the rest of the season, they did all the, all the monies. But WB is like, we 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 can't have this. You need to give us our monies back. Give us our Batman back. I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, that's interesting because the stuff that Disney now has control over. I'm trying to think, 
a lot of stuff that's not really Disney's accustomed. At least, at least there's not a Alien v MCU. <laughs> Ooh, chestburster. Alien v Deadpool. I mean, you could you could do AVDP. You could have a uh, the remember the the Deadpool versus comic where it was just yeah you could have him versus a bunch of st- Dead- Deadpool versus the Disney or it was like Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. De- I mean, that'd be interesting. They did Deadpool versus Thanos. I think is a story that'd be interesting. What would be the most shocking thing they could do in Endgame, in your opinion? What would be something that would actually like make you go, "Oh fuck, I couldn't, I did, I did not see that coming." I think if you, uh, I think doing a not a reset, but doing a uh, an undoing of the of everything from day one. Oh shit! Like everything, because like you said, how um, like Captain Marvel. Is potentially going to lead the team post end game. Yeah. If you took, they went back to 2012. Okay. Say that's where they're going. If they essentially if they s- changed everything post that and got the characters introduced differently. So you mean to say that after the events of Avengers? So after yes. the events of the so original sorry, not, six, not, 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 not like from everyone, but yeah, if Avengers is your is your reset date, right? If you send. Say you send Cat back to 1943, whatever, wherever he left from. Okay. Whatever what year that was. But if you took that and, like, everyone posts that, like, do you take your Black Panther spot? Everything that was, well, Black Panther would still be around because he predates. Yeah, he still predates it. His dad was still around. But if, like, you took every new introduced character and just, you could then play with your scroll if you wanted to in that case. Ooh. So, but if you but if you said that you could bring in, yeah, I don't know. It's there's some diff, there's so many things that I wouldn't surprise me, but I feel like you're gonna see, like I wouldn't be surprised if all of the original Avengers from that movie cease to be around at the end, or cease to be heroes at the end because mm-hmm. you know one well, thing. Remember, remember they had uh, they had old man Cap for a minute because they took away his uh, he became the age he would have been. Well, I mean. If you're going to Secret Invasion, when Captain America comes back, he is an old man because he's been in hiding because of the scroll for so long. So he does come back with the white, you know, look and in, in, in OG version versus this young stout guy or whatnot. So uh, I think that reset. It'd be interesting if you reset the Avengers universe and then made all the other characters show up at the events of that movie. If you brought like, everyone in at 2012. And then- like what happened if? In the first Avengers movie, we got the epicness that maybe people thought could happen. Like, oh, what if they introduce Vision? And, and well, or if he gave us like some of the OG Avengers, like bring Wasp in, because they talked about having Wasp as instead of Black Widow in the first Avengers. Movie. Yeah, but she... that was before, but that was well before Ant Man was even a thought. Well, no, actually, Ant Man was technically the first of the MCU properties that was going to start the whole thing. It should have been the first movie. The first movie that had test footage was Ant Man. That's true. And then it just got shelved. Edgar Wright didn't get the script how he wanted it. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, and it all works out. It worked out how it worked out. We didn't get uh, Ultron created by Hank Pym. Fuckers. Right. But, oh, well, it is what it is. You, you have to... I, w- I will say that MCU has made me a fan of, like, just going, okay, for the most part, they stay true to the comics, and the mm-hmm. few things they twist, all right. Like, whatever, I get it. You had, you had, a, you had an issue with uh, the scroll being the good guys, though. It was the. It was a little confusing, yeah. Because you went in with a, based on the trailers, how you at a, you followed it based on how the comics portrayed it as they were the worst of the worst, but it portrayed them both as two equally evil forces for different purposes, right? And, you and know. I'm sure there's a fa- uh, there's factions of that group that are more evil than others. So that's what you think you said about the Super Scroll, how he could have been from a. A more an angrier faction. I didn't scroll down, and Matt Wilcox had joined, as did Travis Pickett. Hello to both of you. Although you're probably gone. Uh, <laughs> such is life. Why are we? Does it, it, does it say who's actually? It doesn't. Not always. And sometimes people will be here. Like we might have people watching us right now, and it doesn't show that there's anybody there. It's yeah. fucking weird. I I don't like the live stream thing so much. But uh, so no, if you're. This is yeah, there's, there's no one actually watching because it doesn't have the little eye with the number. Yeah, no one likes us. We're not popular. It's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll get, a, we'll get people will watch us after the fact. They'll they'll actually probably listen to us more, anyways. Yeah, that's true. They like our soothing We're, voices. Uh, we we have faces for podcasts, not for live streams. Yeah, <laughs> that's why our podcasts aren't live streamed because we have faces for podcasting. Uh, so I like, but, but what? But I guess you, you asked me. So what would uh, what would surprise you though? You probably talked about this before, but is there something that 
you've thought it out in your head that like if they did this one thing, it would just your head would explode. And you're like, I don't know how they're gonna go forward with I, this decision. I feel like they have to shake up the status quo, so that's obvious. Like we know, like you said, Cap probably gonna get displaced in the forties or something. Tony might die, but will be Peter's new AI. Right. You know, Thor will stick around because they've found new think, life you think with Banner's him. Done? Banner is especially, a utilitarian player. Well, especially because he's one of the few rights that still aren't now are not under the Disney. He's still under Universal. Yeah, and they can just kind of use. And now him. Universal has all the because that's all that Disney needs to complete their not, not their, Universal, their Infinity Gauntlet. But, they, but they, that's the few rights that they don't have, and they probably want they probably want any nothing to hinder any future plans. But he does work better, I think, because the solo, like the Incredible Hulk movie, wasn't great. But of course, Ruffalo wasn't in that role. True. And maybe if if you know, the crazy thing is, Mark Reset Ruffalo, give... Ruffalo was their first pick to be Hulk, and they said no, we need to go with a bigger name, and they went with Ed Norton, and it bit him in the ass. Well, could you I, like they couldn't make Thor Ragnarok with Ed Norton? No, it, it wouldn't have worked because he would have been not like he was. He was just wasn't there. Was he had he has Ed Norton doesn't really have comedic chops in my opinion. I haven't seen him do anything funny. Death to Smoochie. Probably the only movie that he did that was like on the higher comedic level for him, but even still, dry cracker comedy. I don't. Yeah, really like get he does the. One. He's more observational humor. Okay, but I feel like Mark Ruffalo can play both. Sides. Like, yeah, I think it works. The same reason that Thor had to evolve from the Shakespearean to the comedic. To I think Thor and I like Thor, Captain Marvel. At least in the few bits we've seen of their interaction from the trailers. Hi, whoever's there. There are two people. One people. Some, some people, people. Some. Some negative, one negative person, three people. Negative. negative three people. Yeah, they're. We, we're no longer watching. We're watching other people. We don't realize it. Wouldn't that be fucking something, right? Uh, so last time we were on a podcast together, we were talking about uh, growing apart from old friends. That was last week's podcast Oh yeah. And I wanted to touch on that again because I don't think we talked about it enough. Uh, so has that happened to you? Have you had that? Um, you don't want to separate from your friendship, and it's not necessarily that it's toxic per se, but you people, things change, time changes. Well, yeah, I think sometimes friendships are friendships of proximity versus a friendship of like actual, like, it's like school friends. Like when you were growing up, you had friends that you were best friends at school, but you didn't really hang out outside of school. Totally. And like that's the same friends that, like, oh, like you're, you'll talk every day about whatever you had the great interest, or you like you have friends at work. Or, like, you have friends through, like, I have friends now, like, through the network. Yeah. That, we'll talk about the time on the network, I've either never seen them in person or would never think of them as a friend. But we're close through virtual screens. Totally. But I feel like sometimes you, I think you have to, you evolve as a person and sometimes the friends you've had aren't the friends you're going to keep for, they're your friends from, like, a means to an end. Like, yeah, I get you. I get you. Okay, like okay. So my example is that I, when I think about friends that have drifted apart, and, right. and and it's like, damn it, I didn't want that to happen. I worked with this guy Nash, and he's like one of my closest friends. Man, we worked together two years together, every day in and out, doing the grind, delivering furniture to people, breaking right. our backs together, like on the road, traveling in crazy mm-hmm. experiences and shit like that. And then I moved up here to start my new journey, and he's still where he is in his world. Right. And, you know, like, I haven't seen him since 2011. Mm -hmm. And, like, last year out of the blue, he called me one day. And it was like, fuck yes, I'm so stoked to hear about you. No time had passed. It was like nothing. Well, it's like like the friends you had when I first met you are not in your life anymore. Not at all. And you know what I think? It's an, Well, that's I mean, mostly true. The Andrews stuck around. The Andrews stuck around. And obviously Sarah. You, you, Haas, Sarah. And that was per, I mean. Uh, so your roommates. And all, well, your, your roommates you had a falling out with more than. Well, kind of. I had one roommate that stole from me. I had another roommate that let a roommate steal from me and was shitty and spreading rumors about my life. I had a guy that cost me my job. So, yeah, they were all pretty much toxic people. And I needed to get the fuck out. Yeah. You know, and I think that as I got further and further away from the toxicity, me as a person changed and shedded from what I was to who I am. Right. And I think that uh, it's it's definitely not easy to, like, reflect on that. But, I mean, there are even friends that I have up here that I was super close with. And then, like, okay, for example, we, had, we have a very close friend, Michelle. She used to come around all the time. We get to hang out all the time. We would just do, you know, she'd come over and play card games or whatever. Right. And, and or watch movies or whatever and be dorky. And um, Just stop. her and her husband got pregnant. You that know, was it? 
and she had her first kid and it was like going to give her a little bit of time to just be a mom. We went and saw the kid after the kid was like nine months old and then she was like, surprise, I'm having another one. Like, okay. and I was like, okay, well, I think that time is pushing us further apart and I understand that. Well, it's, she's in a different different phase of her life. Correct. And, that's, and you don't have that same kind of... And it's and it's learning. I think the ability to be fluid and accept that and know like, okay, example. You are a, a great example of another friend that I could have lost touch with, but we did lose touch for a few years. Yeah, but the 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 beautiful flip side to that was like everything put us back in like, hey, if you guys want to be friends, this this was actually a viable friendship. Like, it, right? It, we weren't. There was no predicated anything. You know, the, the irony is we both moved away from Central Illinois, but yet moved semi-close to each other. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that was one interesting thing. You were like, yeah, I'm not too far from you, actually. Like, Because uh, it was... Because uh, I remember we got back in touch after... So you're, it was Sarah did something for your birthday. Yeah. And I did something for that. And then we were planning to see Deadpool, I think was the next... Because you would... Because that was before even the podcast thing had entered the conversation, was it? Or was no, it, Deadpool was, was 16, and I was already two years in at that point. Right, but it was before podcasting entered... You because that was later that year because wasn't it, wasn't it that was oh you mean um for you yes for you it was actually I mean sixteen was when I think you came on and did some foodies with us for sure right and then because that was when you were still because ta- you talked to me about when you were creating foodies when you and Veronica were doing it you were you came I to me it's still idea. to you this still, day have I, the idea I, list and I was just like I just brainstormed I love it. it there's a lot of good shit on there we probably need to use and like it's just there sitting for us to go oh fuck we should use that now. Yeah, I'm uh, I mean, from movie t- like the title of the show to right. to segment ideas, like you 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 very, and I think that that initiative, just you doing that, and you had no stake in this at that point, right? And I was like, yeah, I'll be on a couple times. It's not a big deal. And it was just like there was no, but it was like, man, this guy, like, I think kind of wants this. He he's looking for something, an outlet to like express himself. Mm-hmm. I think everybody needs that, you know, whether yeah. it's music or radio show or podcasting or a, a YouTube channel or something. Right. Everybody has a voice, but I think so many people get stifled because they don't know how to let their voice out. Right. And you offered an outlet because like someone like if I mm. didn't have the network and I was like, Oh, I'm gonna get a pot like gives to do so much legwork. And that's probably a lot, how a lot of people fall off. It's like, Oh, you have to pay hosting do all this that you have to plan a schedule you have to well in the get... early days you know of podcasting when i first started the thing i, I love that you're touching on this because it's a great thing to bring up because 2014 podcasting is like only seven years old at this point it's still kind of young it's still and it's also the it hasn't had the boom yet correct no one at this point people are, i'm like i'm gonna do a podcast a what like a radio show and i'm like, like it's internet radio and that's how i would explain it i'm doing internet radio <clears throat> okay cool but I would post an episode, and for two days it would get no plays and nothing and nothing and nothing. And then when I finally started connecting with whoever the audience was, whether it was you or Brando or all these right. other people that were my friends that were starting that, to tune in and get into it. Brando was a part of the show. Correct. I mean, everybody was like starting to finally find it and tune in, and then I stopped. Wait three months. And then I was like, oh, I should probably do this. I didn't understand... Um, consistency and uh, building a market right. based on always being there. Well, because, if you're always there, people are always going to find you. Right. Otherwise, people will think like, "Oh, it's just it's just over now," and then they'll move on. Exactly. Oh, that was a one and done. Boring. Right. You know. But if every week you're showing up in somebody's feed, right. they're going to be like, "Oh, fuck! I should probably well, check it out." And that's the benefit of the network is that there's always kind of like even a show that's like seasonal, like like we haven't heard from Gatliff Radio in a couple months now. Yeah. But it's still like as soon as you guys come back, though, that audience will be there because they're still tuning into the network. They're still seeing it. They're like, oh, like Foodie was able to come back or go away and come back and still has. It's doing better this season. Like yeah. genuinely, numbers wise, we have topped everything we did last year week to week. It, it, it that and that and that that there's a couple things that factor into that. We've obviously had two different features through Podbean, which was right. really great of them to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just having opportunities to spread the network around doing the fun for funds event was a big thing for us because I mean you have one over there that pamphlet though that tells people right. if you don't know about our network every show is in there exactly. every show is represented every show has something that I had to think about what the fuck I wanted to say for you guys right. like how am I gonna sell this show essentially um, and you know what uh, it was really it was worth it because I like how you You've teased random stuff of the second season that might or may not happen. Yeah, just like it's <laughs> totally. It, it, I was Did just you ripping. capitalize. Oh, from the movie. Yeah, yeah. You talked about that last week. Yeah, or on the last foodies. Let me see that. 
Now you got me wanting to know what the fuck you talking about? You capitalize what? Oh, you capitalize money pit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A, I, I forgot to put the quotes. A money pit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, you know, uh, doing events and stuff, I think, has been a big help for podcasting. Getting your name out to actual people, like, the internet's great. Right. I can connect people around the world, but I am not going to be able to sell you my shit or what I want to talk right. about if you don't know me as a person. Like, why does it matter? Right. And I think it's going to be a big help going from a recent live event with Fun for Funds to next month doing... LaviCon. Right, which maybe. will be another big presence for... And then it's just, it's, because I feel like Central India is getting a big, because there's a lot of people that are involved in the network that are also are in person very involved in this, the music scene, the Absolutely. entertainment, alcohol scene, alcohol scene. But no, but the, but I mean, I think that's I think the the beer culture is the beer way culture, is, yes. is the better the way to say scene. that. But <laughs> the alcohol <laughs> scene, I think that may be the episode title, the alcohol scene. No, uh, but people no. think we're drunk all the time. Uh, drunk caster fee three featuring us too. That would be boring. It'd be Dr- weird. We'd just be sitting here. Just like, sad drinking. Just, I'm here, man. No, just, we need a bigger group. I'm all sad. Oh wait, no, we're not doing that. But uh, yeah, so I, you know, and I, I talk about this too. One thing that I'm grateful for was not only you know our network is so different because we are all on one feed. We're all together mm-hmm. pushing towards the same goal and whatnot. But we all have so much cross pollination that we really. Right. Our JICN, like the overarching idea we're giving to people, is the idea of this interconnected universe. It's all of cohesive. People. It is. It is cohesive, and we, you know, uh, the fact that like I'm friends with a guy who runs a different kind of podcast network. Essentially, what you would look at is like maybe some down, wait somewhere down the road. That's what we would do. You know, the kind of thing where every show has their own feed and all this shit. Right. So it's, it's just a bunch of like the if you go to their site, it's just a bunch of links to the other feeds. Is that yeah? But they but those guys aren't like the Mad Scientist Party Hour guys aren't on some of these other shows with some there's, of these there's other no, guys. There's no cross pollination. There's not like or you're even, never going to see like. Even knowledge that they exist, really. You know, there's oh. not a group of people. There's, talking there's no, all the there's time. no bumper for the other show. It's just they're, it's, it's a, it's a common hub for them to plug themselves. But they're not exactly, and that's it. And I don't want that. I well, want it's like, us... it's like, go ahead. Like if you, like you've had Tyler on, uh, on like JIC and on Foodies, and like if it was a dinner of the type of network, you'd be like, well, we're just, this is just our show, and whatever happens for a network that we may or may not be a part of is. Is their business, and we'll find guests for our own shit. We don't right. need anybody, but but like I... this one, it's we get together people. There's like, I mean, you had a you've had a bunch of different hosts, and you've been on a like, I feel like you've been on every show on the network at this point. No, every old show. I have not been on Adulting Ain't Easy. That is true. I have not been on Kids for Sale. That is okay. So. Uh, I have also. I think there's one more that. Let me hold on. Minimizes. Hopefully that didn't just take us away. Just okay, just I'm not, just going to look at the screen, screen real anyway. quick. Okay, officially haven't been on Crucial Tunes either. Okay. So those would be the three. Adulting, Kids, and Crucial Tunes are the three I haven't been on, but I've been featured everywhere else. You haven't else. been on Voice. I kind of have, though, because I did The Road to Survival, which was oh, you... a kind of episode about talking about some of my journey, not really in That's great true. detail, but spoiler alert. <clears throat> have you been on Dungeons? Yeah, several times. Open uh, first episode, the per, the pilot episode, Veronica and I were on. Oh, and you were, then, when you were down that neck of the woods. Mm-hmm, and for the Laffy Con before Christmas, and then we just did exploding kittens at Laffy or at uh, at Fun for Funs, and it came down to Nick and I. Oh, it, I can't wait to hear. I can't I wait like, to. I like exploding kittens. That's a fun I can't wait to share that audio with everybody. I've already heard it, but sharing that it, it was it was a fun experience. Is that gonna be the next. Dungeons, or is that a uh, no, special episode? Because here's how it works. See, right now, Dungeons, this to today as we record this, uh, the final episode of Death House just dropped. Their finale dropped today. Okay. With their finale dropping, they are gonna move into another part of their story with those same characters, just the next phase. Uh-huh. But we've got Fool's Week that's gonna be in between that. And they had that fun for funds episode. So there might be a couple weeks before they jump back, or they might do the fucking Fool's Week. Do their next campaign and then put that exploding kit. So it's it's a, it's a backlog of episodes. You're not sure when that's going to drop. Anytime it could it literally, and that's why on the actual pamphlet I put question mark for what number it was going to be because I didn't know. I was like, right. I'm not sure what number that's going to end up being. But uh, episode oh, it could, 
you're gonna put that out to be episode 100 you're like oh, oh shit, i was so I wrong I, I, I was super wrong I put all questions that for like a year just that's a very uh dick tyner move he's got like two podcasts featuring walk among us on it i've never heard or seen i have no idea and then I, if you saw in the group chat he was like i'm gonna hold this back for patreon exclusive content and you're like join I'll, or die and i, I was I like guess, i guess i'll die okay. guess i'll die because then they're like did they have a lost episode I don't know if Dick actually had a lost episode. I know I've had a couple lost episodes we won't talk about. I, I know that uh, Bruise with Dudes had a couple lost mishaps that happened that were awful. Joys uh, of podcasting. It really is the joys of podcasting, man. It's um, Well, and technology in general. And I want to get back to that with the with podcasting. I feel like right now we're still kind of in the wild west of podcasting. Like We could come on here and say pretty much anything we want. Mm-hmm. Like. We're not going to be white supremacists, but if we were to choose that path and put that out on the internet, for the time being, we could still do right. so, which but, is awful. But if you played a, a song, then they'd get you. But then they would <laughs> fuck us if I played music by, let's say, uh, ELO. You could, you could scream a bunch of white supremacist words. Nothing. Next episode, play Hit Me Baby One More Time. Get you. Immediately flagged. But you know what? I fight that shit every time because I know my fair right usage. I'm looking at you, Facebook. I know the fair rights usage. Zuck, you motherfucker. Don't say that. He might, he might not like that. Assad. Eh? Assad. Assad eh? That's what I'm going to say to him. But uh, No, nah, man. Um, where were we at? We were talking about... This is very podcast for like. My brain is all You're, uh, scrambled with meats. We were kind of talking about the uh, the losing touch with friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... I had t- I had talked about a couple people like that. Are there any, are there any people like that with you that you have lost touch with? Well, I actually talk about an example of that. I don't know if I brought up anywhere else. Um, last October, I had my ten year high school reunion that I went to. Cool. And it's really weird. Like I was a very different person from my senior year of high school to now. Definitely. Like I've come on my show a lot. Like college I knew you really. Then. That's yeah, crazy. You and like I came on my show a lot. I became a lot more outgoing. But when I went and I walked into my house for noon, I feel like it all kind of came back, and I get a little more quiet, get a little more reserved. Like you're like, I don't know these same people the way I used to. Like I remember them, but we have nothing in common. You're a group of strangers again, right? But like, but like I found like two of my really good friends there, and we chatted a little bit, and it was like no time had passed. That's awesome. because they'll rem- they remembered you at all stages of your life, and it's just the continuation. Like you have a wife and kids now you've been in a long time you've been done other things but we're still right back here well and another thing too is is some of those friends i'm sure you keep up with on facebook so it's easy to kind of stay in their lives right but it's still the weird thing you know stuff about them that like they've not directly told you but they've shared it on facebook so you're like how's the like you know i know know too much that i can't be like so how's the thing going with that and you're like good i guess how did you know oh and then you're like oh facebook told you duh and you're like oh okay that is a common theme being not only a part of the network and helming this thing but also being in walk among us a lot of times people know my business when i go to places and i'm like who the fuck are you they're like we're facebook friends man don't you remember and i'm like what's your name again are you luke and he's like no my name's adam bro it was close it was close (laughs) i know you through this and that but i don't like you know of me, but I don't know you. Oh, the is... guy's name was Alex, not Adam. Alex Nichols. See, now I won't forget it. But right. he, this guy, he's been at a couple of our well, shows. It's like I... when you had that, that crazy thing where you um, you met the guy at the Metallica show that liked your band. Oh, yeah. He's kind of come to our fucking show in Chicago, too. He lives in California, and he's flying to Chicago, of course, to also see the Misfits. But he made sure to fly in a day early so he can also be at our show. And like that's... that's... Someone who... Likes the misses enough that the one who's going to fly out across the country to see them, but also to see a band that you're not you're obviously you're not on the same level as the misfits, but he like but you're evolving and you're going, but you have the audience that is like, I think I can't that, see the misfits, I gotta see you guys too. Like, it's yeah, that's a good thing, and and you know, maybe this was a little bit of us playing the field and knowing what was what as soon as they announced that show in Chicago, April 27th. I was immediately like, let's figure out what venue we're going to play the 26th. Because then we know all these people that want to see us. We literally have 4.2 thousand fans on Facebook. Well, like, you see, like, I've seen like the the views you get on your like your Fiend Fridays. Crazy, crazy. Like, I mean, you know there are people like who 
look forward like if you didn't drop one one they'd be like hey where's the trust me we waited one friday and we had messages friday morning everything okay? it's friday where's the video like every like this is my this is my routine i watch your video and i do the and i was like don't worry it's coming soon like we didn't forget about you it's just coming later in the day because sometimes with the way our schedule the right. three well, of us the schedule sometimes you've had like even thursday night gigs before yeah, Thursday night gigs usually mean we're doing a day of release on that video or we're going to do it the day before right. or however it works out. But to to go back to that show in Chicago, like we looked at this as an opportunity. We have fans literally around the globe. Like that's something I can confidently say. Right. We've got fans in every country all over the globe. So an opportunity they want to see the Misfits because it's legendary. The OG Misfits, Danzig helming the fucking the vocals. You you I, in my lifetime didn't think I would ever see that. So to so now they've played Chicago. Now this will be the second time. Have you seen them when they? Mm -hmm. We saw them in 2016, like right after our first gig. It was our first gig. We saw the Misfits, and we played our second gig. It was yeah, it was nuts. Like you can imagine, just if all those people are like like who already know who you are, who they ever see the Misfits, and just wherever the venue you're at, just. Standing room only, like fill, packing that place to the brim just to see what you guys have to say. Well, and that's, you know, that was the goal, but now it's becoming reality. I mean, the fucking, the dude, the dude that is the guy that runs Danzig's fan club and manages Danzig and is the photographer, Maurice Nunez, is coming with his 13 year old son to see our show in Chicago and shared that shit on Danzig's fucking fan site. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, that is not something in my lifetime I could ever expect. So right. we and, you, and you're and you're you're a band from Northwest Indiana, yeah, reaching just, like you're not. Yes, you're close to Chicago, but you're not near. Like you're not near like a Massachusetts, but you've created this music scene that is fall. That's obviously having the access to social media and having all that has really expanded your band beyond a reach that you couldn't do what you're doing now twenty years ago. Exactly. As well. Exactly. And I think you, I mean you could get started, but you would not have the same growth. There are things in play now too that change that. You said it with social media. I think another thing is um women being able to have more of a voice. Mm -hmm. Like I one thing I would love to discuss right now is female fronted is not a genre. If your band is just, led by a, a band? it's just a band. You're a fucking band that has a lady singer, and you hopefully kick ass. Like, right. don't call don't call it female fronted and call that a genre because it's 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 bullshit. It's like, it's like whenever uh, not to get off topic, but remember it's like when you see uh, in the Scott Pilgrim movie, and it's like they have a, they have a female drummer. Too. It was the. It's just like she's just a drummer, man. Like, like, like any gender can play an instrument. Why does it matter? Exactly, and you know I think that time has allowed that to be more of a thing. Right. So because it used to be more of a. Not an exotic thing, but it was it was a a niche market. It was like, oh, they, it's an all female band, or it's a female led. You had like Joan Jett, the Runaways, right. that were you know put heart pushing the fold back then. But like you look at now, and we're a band that goes up on stage, no amps, no guitars, no bass, right? And they totally, totally like if you want to use the right word, naked yeah, on you have, stage. You have a very unique sound too. Uh, correct, but we are very vulnerable on stage. It's very easy for our sound to be fucked up. If there's a night where V gets buried and it's just Sarah's piano, but her piano's not turned up quite enough, but you can barely hear the vocals, like it could be a shit show. We right. can still play through every song and right. we're not concerned, but the audience isn't going to have the same thing. Right, and because they're not any venue you go to is not expecting you exactly, and that's one thing we've had to learn how to like coach sound guys because we, because like oh well here's where you plug in your guitar, there's where you plug in this. I don't have to change anything. We're like, oh, I have two pianos. We're, and we have to go, we've got DI boxes for you. Just run two more mic cables. Like, you're like, going to oh. set. And we're always like, you know, set just, the volume. Just stand, just stand back. Let me fix this all. And then just. Sometimes I do. I, I will be like, let me just run the sound. Like, I'll set our levels and it'll be good, you know. Uh, do, you have, do you fight some people on that? Like, no, don't... not really. I, I, like, if they seem to be having a hard time, I'll offer. Like, do you want me to just set it up, man? Because it won't take me but a we minute. You know how to do this. I, yeah, it's like, it's and my. And you'll put it back how it was when it's. Well, no, I'll just let them run sound after that. I'll just be like, whatever. But my thing is, we always tell them, no matter what, once you set our levels, leave it. We play dynamically. We know how to get louder and get quieter with our instruments. We don't need you to make us louder or make us quieter. We can naturally play right. lighter or harder to do that. So it's just learning how to tell people the thing has been an interesting experience. But um, we were totally tangenting it back together here. You were talking about that fan that came to see me, and, right. and, I, and I said he's going to come to the Chicago show. You know... The goal was to just have people who we haven't had an opportunity to ever play for, people in L.A., people in Vegas, people where we haven't yet been able to right. tour. If they come and see us, 
and we make a big enough of an impact, they're going to ask people to bring us there. Right, because if you can... Because you can get brought out somewhere. You would gladly go wherever that opportunity would take no you. No question. If you book us, we'll be there. If you book us and pay us our guarantee, we'll be there with smiles on our face. If you book us more than our guarantee, we'll be there with smiles on our face, and we might even sing you a personal fucking ditty. That's how we are. Right. You know, like... Because uh, do, do most... I, I don't know anything about the museum, but do, sure. do they pay your travel? Depends on where you're going. Depends on what it is. So... Now, in 2019, we have a guarantee that's X amount. No, I won't disclose that here. That covers, built into that price, all three of us getting paid, wear and tear on the truck. So essentially, travel, right? right. Uh, those things considered, we get paid, we're good. Some venues, we don't play the guarantee game. But like, we're going to play a new place uh, in June. The guy was like, we want you to play really badly. What's it going to take? I said, here's the deal. This is our guarantee. Can you do it or not? He said, yes, we got a show. He said, no, well, I don't need you. At, I don't need to be at that venue as much as you're wanting me at that venue. When they seek us out, we have more control. Right. If you're seeking them out, then you're it's, at their mercy. Exactly. You're playing a very delicate negotiating balance. Right. Like, well, or sometimes they'll pay you just off the back end. Like, whatever we get profit. 80% at the door is usually what the, what the, what the fine Especially line if deal. Especially if there's multiple bands, you usually have to share it amongst the... Which most promoters will sit there, split it up fairly, give everybody their cut, and it's good, you know. Getting paid is not usually a problem with us. Uh, we've, I think since 2017, we've had maybe one possibly two incidences where well, we did get that, paid. That was that one when you talked about heavily. Yes, the, the, the really shit show that... Uh, we don't need to go into it again. It's... No, it, it's not worth it. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, the music scene is so weird because people are clamoring to hear live music and they mm -hmm. don't even realize it. Right. So many people live their lives in headphones. I mean, wearing, I'm wearing them now while we're podcasting, but like you don't realize what the effect live music will have on you. And I'll take this as an example, like... I'd been to a concert that wasn't my own concert in a couple of years, I think. It had been a minute. So when we went and saw Metallica, like that was a fucking religious experience as I've ever had. I felt the energy of fucking life in that room, you know, right. 18,274 well, that, people. That's, that's never going to be rushing to get from headphones listening to a, a band. Exactly, because it's compressed. You, 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 listen to, it's, you listen to a live album, it's not the same. You feel you don't feel the energy of the people that are there with you feeling the same thing, and you're not recognizing like I'm actually in this room. Right. Like I don't care how big the room is. I don't care if I'm from me to my neighbor's house. Right. I'm in the building where Metallica played. Man, you can't right. you can't take that away from my life experience. Joe Blow can't take that right. away. You know. So uh, I mean, that's why I'm thinking I got to see Lincoln Park live. Before. I'm jealous of that. Saw him in Indiana. Like just like it worked out. We went and saw him, but like. Can't do that now. No, it, well, it wouldn't be the same. Obviously, I don't. I don't think there even there's even talk of them doing anything. Speaking of music stuff, uh, I don't know if you follow the band Static X at all. I do not. So they uh, they had a lead singer Wayne Static. I was a real big fan of this band. So it was his band? I'm guessing Wayne Static. Correct. Static X, yeah. Correct. So he died. Okay. Drug overdose a couple years ago. That's unfortunate. It was very unfortunate, and a lot of people in the scene were like, "What the fuck?" Like. This is what we were trying to warn this dude about, like, whatever. So Static X, Wayne Static and their bass player, Tony, had, like, this massive falling out, and there was this big descent of who owns the band. Technically, Tony owns the rights to Static X and all the songs just by how things fell in the contract, right? Mm -hmm. With Wayne dead, he's now the sole owner of the band. So he decided he's going to get the original lineup together, minus Wayne, and they're going to have a new lead singer, but that lead singer will wear a mask, because they don't want people to know who is behind the mask. They want them to only be judging this person based on their voice. Okay. And I love that. I love that they're like, we, it doesn't matter who the fuck is behind that mask singing the songs. Listen, listen to the tune. Sorry, there was a person outside. Oh, that happens sometimes in my house. People. Okay. But it's, um, but I think, isn't there, isn't there a band that's like, supposedly made up of famous people, like the Mummies or something that do music? Do you know anything about that? Like they're, they all wear like costumes. I know about the mass singer. I know that, that that's a thing. But there was a there's a. I really want to ask Liz, but she's not on the podcast. And I can't. But it's uh people who are dressed up. Uh, so you just don't know who they are, and it's just, it's a rotating lineup of like relatively famous musicians that just play in relative obscurity. Oh, I didn't know that. And just play. Just, I don't know what music they play, but I've just I know they exist out there, and it's just it's very unique because you're judging them not based on their 
who they are. Who they are, but just on their stage presence and their performance. Exactly, exactly. And um, stage form- performance and presence, good, good thing to come back to that, too. That's another thing that's difficult for us as a band. I sit down on the drums, and those two have pianos in front of them that they're stuck to. And you can't just get up and, like, walk around We can't the stage run around. Like, we don't have wireless pianos. Out. Exactly. You so don't have a guitar. We have to bring... You get a guitar. I don't think it would work at all for your sound, but it would be V V could play guitar. Her sound would work. She could turn the dirty keys into guitar, and that would be wicked. I don't know if she would enjoy a guitar. That would be kind of fucking hysterical to see. (laughs) I might take her to fucking Guitar Center later just to watch that happen. Like, put on a guitar. I want to see it. Uh, But It could be black. I don't know. We have to just, uh, one. you know, it's hard. Music is difficult, man. You have to catch people, and I think that that's why the music scene is dying. Mm -hmm. You have so many bands that are the same genre over and over and over and over. And no one's trying to do that genre differently or with any gravitas or balls to step outside of the bounds. That's why we said... Dick joined. Who? Dick joined. Oh, Dick has joined. Uh, here comes the mummies. Oh, that's the... Drummer is Eddie Mummy. Do you know what's crazy? Here comes the mummies. Might be playing Logan's Port, Indiana this year. With Walk Among Us opening. That's a spoiler. Really? It might happen. We've got a line on that. Uh, You're trying. I, d- I know the guy that's booking the show quite well. He really likes what we do. We've played there a couple times. Don't so. usually, isn't usually the opening act usually tagging along with the band, though? Or does it depend on the... It depends. It really does. Sometimes Some, you bring some, someone... Up, up, band will bring someone out with them but sometimes they're just the mercy of the venue if you've seen tours where it's like coheed and x yes. are touring and they play 50 shows in america mm-hmm. they are usually on the same label or have the same manager or something that binds them mm-hmm. then they go out on the road together and they just do their toury thing like okay uh i don't I, I don't really have any good examples of that right now right but uh alternately if you're like a specialty band like the mummies who maybe they have their own, I don't know, contracts or their own record label or whatever you want to call it, they probably just tour whatever shows they want to go to, hit up whatever venues they can, and then whoever the venue supplies is their opening act, they're like, cool, we don't have to pay for their travel, we don't have to worry about if they're okay and getting from place to place, or if they can't make the date, what to do, it's already taken care of. Right. So that's nice, And and that gives you some more exposure to a different audience that wouldn't seek you out directly. Exactly. Thanks, Brando, for that tip on, or that uh, heads up on here comes the mummies. He might be our, he might be our one viewer right he now. Might, he is probably the only viewer we've had this entire time. Thank yeah. you so much, Brandon Stone, for checking it out on this episode of we're recording for an hour and a half. Podcast. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. That's typical podcast That's, though. We get definitely not doing a four hour like they, some of those. Those, no, those, man, those, are, get, those are hard to watch and or listen to. You're like, that's my Friday. That's my Tuesday night. That's like two Marvel movies, motherfucker. I could watch the Infinity that's, that's, War and that's, that's one third end game. That's one third of end game. One and one third. One and one third. Weird. You said end game, <laughs> and end game tickets are on sale, or, or, or their on sale release date has been revealed. What, what, what date is it? I don't know. Let's go to comicbook.com, My source for so comic book I definitely news. Definitely want to see that. That comes out right before LaFiCon. So, but you probably can't talk about it at LaFiCon. Well. Here's the thing. We're going to... I don't know how or when or what the plan is, but there will be an episode where oh, we that's dive... A that's a trailer. Where we dive deep into April 2nd. Tuesday, right. April 2nd. Gotta get my tickets. Comic book confirmed with our sources. Tickets for Endgame will go on sale April 2nd. Make sure you have your plans now if you want to be one of the first to see the next crossover epic from Marvel Studios. Probably get my... I'm probably going to see it Thursday night. 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock. Whatever I can get tickets to. I'm going to try to get tickets to 6 o'clock because I want a fucking coin or whatever Both. they're going to no. give away. I'll watch it every <laughs> fucking showing that whole weekend. Now, the crazy thing is I have one shot to see Endgame that Thursday because Friday, Friday we have a show. Saturday's LaFiCon. Sunday's LaFiCon. And, and, if you, and you're not going to wait to Monday. No, there's no way, and I don't want to be spoiled. So I'm going to go in as quickly as early as possible. Thursday at 6. Just my game. It. My thing is... At least, if, at least it's not midnight anymore. Remember when there used to be old, true, true mid- midnight releases? God. Dark Knight. Uh, Dark Knight did it. Uh, another one that was, I remember, uh, Revenge of the Sith did it. That was the day I graduated. So at midnight, the day I graduated, we were in the theaters watching Revenge of the Sith. I slept all day until rehearsal at like 11. Went to rehearsal for 15 minutes, went home. Slept the rest of the day until the nighttime to go to fucking graduation. There you it was, go. It was yeah, all right. Go see that movie. Yeah, well, we will definitely be seeing uh, Endgame. 
That might be a great trade. I see at Lafigan. Well, what I was thinking is if we do it, we'll do it as an after show where there is nobody there and like, tell people like, like just so you know, just a heads up. We're going to give this warning once. If you have not seen Avengers Endgame, you will play be Blair a siren in just... five, four, three. Captain America dies at the end. What the fuck? You didn't count to one. What? I didn't say I was going to count to one. I just started counting. Just guys... uh, have an air horn. Just attention, everyone. You're going to talk Man. about Endgame. So if you don't want to be spoiled, you should leave the premises. This is not a test. Get but, out. But spend all your money before you leave. You know? It's like, uh, did you hear about that? Actually, that, this is good. This is good news. To, or not, It's interesting news to talk about. So uh, there was a guy at C2E2 mm-hmm. who got busted for stealing $9,000 worth of comics, right? Did he just was he just picking him out and just not paying for him? Well, I don't know what the game plan was or whatever, but I guess somebody boxes from a table. Maybe? Somebody saw this guy. He looked like he was a little bit suspicious, so they checked their secret security cams they had brought to C two E two. I'm sure there's those everywhere. Everywhere. Oh, for sure. It's 2019. There are cameras fucking there's everywhere. Flo- there's drones just floating around. Yeah. So they checked their cameras and they saw this dude stealing and they called the cops. Dude got arrested. So dude gets arrested and uh, Alex Cutter from. Uh, LaFiCon messages me. He's like, he, check this out. And he had sent me the article. And I was like, I already read it. Ha. Huh? He's like, yeah. That dude was one of our vendors at LaFiCon last year. So I say that aloud. I was like, this dude was a vendor at LaFiCon last year and he sold, so he stole $9,000 worth of comics. Was it, it going to take him to flip him at? I have no idea what the game plan was. But as soon as I said, this guy was at LaFiCon and he stole $9,000 worth of comics, V went, I think I was talking to him outside. I show her the picture of this dude. She was like, that dude has a family, a wife, and a kid. She starts naming all these details that they've put. And I was like, you did talk to him. Like, what so the fuck? Was it a lot of comics or just a lot of, a few valuable comics? I think it was a few high dollars. I, you could probably. So you, can't, you can't just get like, oh, I got a box of $4 comics. Just, yeah, that's not going to work. But you could get three or four, like, $3,000 comics and right. really make some. Or a couple, or a few hundred dollars. Some of those rare. Yeah. Like, the, Cap- the first appearance of Captain Marvel's worth a pretty penny now. The first appearance of Carol Danvers? Carol Danvers, Danvers, sorry. Wait, 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 hold on. No, no, I'm asking a question because I'm unsure what you're speaking of. Are you saying the first appearance as the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Captain as Captain Marvel? I have that. Isn't it? Isn't it worth some money now? Yeah, let's look it up. Look that shit up. You keep talking. I'm gonna pull this shit up. Yeah, because I think it's like when like uh like when Deadpool came out. Like whenever something enters, not this like they're kind of like the zeitgeist when it becomes more mainstream. The the uh. The comic values goes because people want to go back to it, and it becomes. It's like if they've ever made a uh, like a uh, not a Mr. Terrific movie. I'm sure, Mr. Terrific comics will probably just balloon, and they might make another run. Well, I think You're there's right. a current run, but so still. right now it says the first appearance of Carol Danvers as Captain Marvel is worth, in my condition, two twenty five. Okay, I'm into that. What's the twenty five? Or twenty nine dollars. That like a, that's the lowest grade. So it goes highest grade, which is and that like is nine, you have to get it uh, down to two. Is it C? Not CGC. CGC. Yeah, yeah. The comic grading. So do you? Uh, code. I don't have that word. Do you send it off and then they package it like that? Fuck them. I don't. I hate that shit. I think it de- it degrade. Like if you want to keep a co- a copy of your comic, like if you let's say bought two, right, and you choose to CGC one, I get that. If you went out and searched for a slabbed book, you're fucking dumb. You know why? You know what I love about a comic? You can open it. Opening it up and looking through it and smelling the pages and and literally reliving like I'm in the fucking like, 60s. Like would you hate to have like your whole Spider-Man run just encased? I would fucking I would want to die. Like what's the point? Well, you want me to just collect Isn't comic covers? If I want to hey, collect those, comic covers, I'll fucking go print them off the internet, man. Those are you nice. Know? Some are nice covers. They are, but that's not why I want them. I want them for the book, for the juicy insides. And I want to story. be able to look at a first appearance of Wolverine or the first right. appearance of Spider-Man like, or whoever. But if you're in it, like I guess if you're in it for the money, yeah, like look at all these 9.0 grade. Sure, and it proves that they're high grade, but what does that do for you right now? I'd rather sell them raw and real and have somebody appreciate right, them. Right, like obviously I'm not going to like fold it on itself like, well, let's look at this. I'm not going to crease it down the middle, but like if you take care, like if you were a nice person to take care of your comic, like it's not going to. Exactly, and all you have to do is just take care of them. Put, a, put it in a bag and board and call it good. And put it in a long drawer box. Slide that shit shut and forget about it. Mine's, you've seen you, my you, room, you know. Is there a file cabinet? No, it's in, it's in drawers. Oh. Well, I'll show you again, man, but yeah, no, I, I guess I have, I have pretty much every comic in this run that we're looking at right now. Is that your uh, Avenging Spider-Man run. I didn't realize that that cover was 175 bucks. The H uh, Joe Quesada sketch variant. Uh, Dynamic Forces cover. Uh, fucking. It's, it's interesting. 
I still don't quite get why there's a such a big market for variant covers. I still don't quite get that. Like, where it's like, this has 11 covers. Like, why? Uh, it depends. So, some of them I can actually... Well, like, because, uh, like, I picked up uh, Detective Comics 1000. Sure. Yeah, they had probably no, like, no, 10 no, different like, variants. Oh, yeah. And the, it was all based on the decade run, like, the different style, the different look of the, like, the, they had the old DC logo and the banner and all of that. They, and they kept evolving it, so it looked like a different modernized version of the, the book. That's cool. And and that's for the collector who loves not just the books inside, but also the art. And right. I, I I get into well, the, some of those. Get like like oh like I really like um like you're like oh like I like Scott Snyder's run on Batman, but I love Greg Capullo's art. Like so, if you want his cover for that run, even though it's not his book, like hey, that's... or or like uh, Greg Capullo doing a Flash cover, and you're like oh my god, I never thought he would do a Flash book, but right. you're getting to see his art, and it's a different right. take on it. You know, yeah. that's what I love more than anything. You know, um. Man, comics are weird, though, because, you know, in the 70s and whatnot, comics weren't desired as something you collected. It wasn't right. until the 90s, the boom of... Well, it's like how you saw, like, how um, when they were, like, when they first came out, how they were just, they were treated like newspaper. They were just Correct. filler. And, you know, I've seen... That's why people find, like, Action Comics number one, like, in a wall with other newspapers, because it was just better use as packing material yeah. or insulation or like oh i just found this x-men number one at a fucking auction and it's folded in half wasn't a big deal for them to fold in half it was just their johnny book they just put it in the back you know just yeah. put it in their pocket and walked around didn't, yeah they didn't give a fuck they didn't understand they passed it to their friend and be like yeah but that's but it needed to be there before it could be here exactly and that and that and that i think because if like if adults were after like oh this is a rare item then it would never it wouldn't exist anymore correct it, they would have it been... had to be kids to kids to kids well said, well said. I think that's uh. It was like whenever the person talks about the uh, how Watchmen was the no was it Watchmen that was the this the sexually transmitted comic. <laughs> what the one how it always um, like, I think I can't remember. Someone was talking about this on a podcast how, um, like a, a woman would like it, it would take it to like. Obviously, like, at the time period, they would take it to the next like guy's house, and he would find it, and it was just it kept getting around that way and finding its. This they called it the sexually. Okay. I, 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 a, I feel like that's X Men though, because X Men comics in the '90s were everywhere. Let me look at this. Uh, I know there was a story about it. Let me find it here. Keep sure. It. Yeah, you look it up. Don't look up sexually transmitted. Uh, oh, interesting. I guess we're a part of something new. That's cool. I like that. But uh, no, man, I don't know who's joined us on the uh, on the podcast right now. We want to thank you guys so much for checking out Podcast for this week, yeah, episode it, eighty-three. Fine. It's okay. Uh, we're just here on I episode. Say it was Watchmen or some 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 like non-mainstream book at the time. Okay, makes sense. It probably was that or Hellboy. I oh, could have been. Speaking of, you excited for that movie? I. I am to an extent. I just like David Harbour, but I'm really. It looks like it's going to be. They're really using their the modern effects budget yeah. for this movie. Yeah. But I, the fact that I really wish Guillermo del Toro was still attached. Well, that's. But, I mean, but have you seen his movie that he's producing, the Scary Stories? Yeah, to tell in the dark. That looks intense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely lots of good coming. So another fun. another thing we could bring up on here that would be worthy of talking about with two people discussing. How you feel about Nate calling all this uh, James Gunn news that broke? I, mean, I, I was I was honestly shocked. Yeah, like I really didn't think that. Like I knew it was probably partially tied to the deal. They couldn't do anything. Like, but I honestly thought even if they had no reason not to, but I think it was more monetary than than realizing their mistake. I think they realized that Guardians Three with any of the director is not going to make as much money because it's not going to have the same passion. Exactly. But I think it was like if Guardian, like if Guardians One and Two were just mid, like not as well performing as Thor Dark World performing. Yeah. Like they would have been like, okay, we're just not gonna have any more Guardians movies. Like Like whatever, we lost them. They, we'll just, they we'll, fell do, to we'll, the we'll put something else. We'll make uh we'll make a Mr. Terrific movie. Okay, moving on. But like I think realizing that there's enough that at stake monetarily that they're like, we can't just let this go. Especially because like they've said they're the future is in space. And you know and I, the Guardians I, were the first ones there. And it's interesting that you said that because I just recently reread an uh, interview that James Gunn did just before all that shit happened, like weeks before. Well, because it was, was Comic Con right before that, wasn't it? Wasn't that no what led same week? Comic Con happened. It was the week of not com yeah SDCC was the week that he got fired. That all but, happened. But, but wasn't he? Because he, he was at Comic Con, wasn't he? Mm mm. He was scheduled to, to appear for Berserk and then didn't make and the, the appearance because it, it that, all that stuff came out and mm -hmm. and that's when everyone 
that was involved, like everyone at Disney was very tight lipped on what was happening. What because was also was on. it was they're also kind of blindsided because it wasn't through Marvel. It was a Disney decision. decision correct. Well, but, it wasn't even it wasn't even the it wasn't even uh, Bob Iger. It was his because he was Alan on vacation. Horn. So it was the under. It was the it was a it was a purely PR decision. And, and you know, like I had said, it only made the most sense to me that they hold off with their dealing with the Fox deal mm-hmm. and trying to get everything over. It made sense. But James Gunn had said, like in an interview a couple weeks prior to his firing, he was like, "What happens in Guardians Three spawns the future of the comics universe. Like that's the right. story we're telling. It's going to tell. It's an inlet for other stories." Well, obviously, they tried to like. Obviously, you've, you've talked about they've talked to Taka Waititi. They've talked to other directors who have played in a similar field. But no one wanted to touch it. Not with a ten because, like, foot pole. Because look, like, if Ta- said like, "Sure, I'll do it." James Gunn got rehired. They would have just kept going full steam ahead with the engine, right? And I mean, it, it would have been a fine movie, but it wouldn't have been the same movie. Well, and then another thing too is then Taika Waititi gets put in a situation where he is now the next James Gunn, and if he makes any mistakes, he's on the chopping right. block. Right, and he wants you know? to. And I'm sure he doesn't want to play in the MCU forever. He likes his like he's. They're doing that TV series, the. Uh, about that movie he made, the, oh, the vampire uh, movie. Oh, what we do in the shadow, or yeah, what we do in the dark, what we shadow. do in the shadows. Yeah, dark shadows. It's something like that. Dark shadows is another vampire. Show some like some shit. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, but like I think he doesn't. He likes jumping in out, but he doesn't want to be tethered to the MCU. I think is how I'm gathering because a lot of these creative people don't. It's like you don't. Want, they don't want to be locked into like. All right, you're doing your next ten years is going to be attached to the MCU. Like some people want to spread their wings in a different way. They're getting, they're getting to play, but they still have to play within the confines of the MCU. I think they've got kind of like the five-year plan going. Joss had the first five-ish years right. of them building it, and then it was kind of handed off to the Russos, and they've right. handled it. But the Russos have said, we might not be done after the Infinity right. Saga is I would, over. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing them to do a nothing like with the big cast. Give them, give them one character. Okay. Like how they did with Captain America. Okay. Winter Soldier was an awesome movie. Hell but then, yes, But then was. like they had Civil War, and then like... And then uh, Infinity War and Endgame now. Civil War here test how many characters can you do in a right. movie? And but like, but like they when they got to just play with one character without all these interconnected people, like obviously they had Black Widow and a and some just ancillary characters, but giving them just like one like, well you you do a Hulk movie like yeah. like give them like something that they can just chew down on yeah I like that something they can really sink their teeth into like, it's, it's almost like the retirement package of the oh yeah that's like if like. Oh, like we want Joss back, but not to do like an Avengers. Like, Joss, you want to make a an Adam Warlock movie? Like, Sending you to him, Florida. Just give you, just give you, give you a character. Just pick pick a character from the box. Any character. Just shuffle. Just shake the box. Pick. Trust the cup. What? Oh, okay. Brando wants to catch up soon. We should do that, man, for sure. I'm all about that. Throw down a pod after Fool's Week. All Ooh. right, I'm all about that. Hit me up, my friend. You know where to find me, my dude. Um, what else should we talk about today on this podcast? I feel like we podcast your feed all over the place. I feel like I was thinking you want to. I think we do have a final topic. I feel like we're getting or kind of winding down here. I don't really have a final topic. Want to want to end it here? I, feel I like mean, that's a good discussion. I could play a video for you that'll get stuck in your head, but it'll piss the girls off. <laughs> nah, it's a Super Mario Brothers three song that somebody wrote lyrics oh, over, and no, it's no. really let's, let's not do that. I think up. I think we're I think we're good here. All right. Well, before we get out of here, let's tell everybody where they can find Podcast Free, which you can check out Podcast Free on the Journey into Comics Network at journeyintocomics.com. Get us on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Google Play Music, Spotify, Castbox, and many others. Just search Journey into Comics you Network. You can find the Podcast Free podcast on our own feed at Podcast Free Pod at podbean.com yep also have a patreon you can check out by searching podcast i don't know about podcast all that pod i think they have their own separate maybe patreon. look on their facebook they'll have more info yeah, but for sure. I, as far as i'm aware i think it's okay. just search podcast you'll find something okay awesome uh also and live streams every tuesday yeah live streams every tuesday right here on the facebook page and folks, sometimes not on tuesday which <laughs> is like today which is sunday it's weird confusing everybody's like what the fuck yeah the brick wall behind us they're so confused it's faux brick it's not even real just run right through it. Damn it. Don't oh, do, yeah. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> you knew I was going to do Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, folks. So well, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of Podcastrophy. Yeah. All right. Well, as always, I've been Dick. And I'm Andrew. And Wait, I'm Nate. And You're still Andrew. That's it. And I'm, that's, and I'm still Andrew. And make every day a, a big dick, dick day. day. Later, guys. True Dick Energy. Just